Hey there, tappers! Welcome to our batch number three tasting. At long last, we're finally together. <laughs> we're finally gonna make this shit happen. Took a long time. It really did. That's all right. You know, I'm just yeah. glad we get to. You know, honestly, I think I prefer it this way because we get to start the new year out right. That that is true. Mm -hmm. And we're we're both happy. We're both healthy. That's all you can. Good really way to for. start it off. Hey, absolutely. We do also, in addition to that, have a few announcements. We're going to show you some of the new uh, equipment that we got. I'm very excited. This is actually Tyler's first time seeing a lot of this stuff too. So it's yeah. very exciting to uh, kind of get to see it at the same time. So make sure to tune in. You'll get to see all this cool stuff we got in store for you. Mm -hmm. All right, so first off, we're going to start off with peach vanilla. As you can probably tell right away, we don't have our nice labels on them. Uh, one of our friends who was designing them, our art director, uh, she had a few issues with actually with hardware designing the labels. So we'll we'll be finding a new way to make them very soon. You'll just be you'll just have to imagine. Just imagine the best label possible, and that's what's on this right now. It's it's beautiful. And uh, our peach vanilla, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was our uh, flannel man. Uh, if we decide to do a, um, <clears throat> if we decide to do a uh, cryptid story hour, we'll we'll explain that a little bit more. That's almost crosses more into the creepy pasta realm, but it is also considered a cryptid for the most part. But like I said, since we didn't have labels, we I can really be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's crack them open. Woo! Ooh, those are good. Pop the champagne. Yeah. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Much healthier bubbles than we've had in the past. Very happy about that. I really like the color on these too. Yes, nice and clear, but also got that nice almost i would say almost like a vanilla like that vanilla brownish hue to it i was thinking little. more of like peach flesh color yeah yes like an orange okay one or like peach yeah peach, peach. Yeah. yeah like an orange or a yellow right I, yeah i guess yeah you, you you said orange and i immediately went there's no oranges in here well, that's true there is no oranges in here yeah Ooh. is there with the uh, spices Actually, no. That's the pe the the pear has some orange uh, peel in it. Okay. That's really good. Yeah, there's a lot of vanilla, but it, it kind of is. The vanilla, it's I feel calmed like, down a lot from when we first tried it. Yeah, thing. the vanilla is not nearly as strong, but I feel like we're getting a lot more of that peach. I think you're right. I think it could use a little bit more peach. Um, but there's definitely a good, good mix as opposed to what it was before, which was mm -hmm. just quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of vanilla and not much else. Mm -hmm. I like it that there's actually a good so amount surprising. of carbonation in here. I was just about to say that the carbonation is actually so strong. Yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, Nick will be sitting there looking at his drink and then we'll get like hand motions from our director being like you're covering your face but it's so cool to look through <laughs> i can see you guys through there kind of not really i was gonna say not no, you, no you can't tastes delicious though it is very good i'm i'm really happy with this one i am too um i think we finished our our first year of production out nicely i think this was mm -hmm. a good good flavor or one of a good flavor to finish on or one of the two to finish mm -hmm. on this sure. one we, we did do a really nice winter cider. I think so. I think this would make an excellent winter cider. I'm a little sad we weren't able to drink it on New Year's because this would go perfect with winter celebrations. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now we know. <laughs> yeah, now we know. Next year we'll just make it again. Absolutely. Did a little bit earlier, but we'll make it again. Mm -hmm. So for our second cider, we have our... Uh, it was a, a pa we called it paranoia. Paranoia. But it's a, it's a, a mulled pear cider. Uh, oh, right, lay, was, lay the cryptid on me. Uh, it was the Sasquatch. Yeah, it was. Sasquatch. It was. I don't know how I can forget that <laughs> for as long as I did. We're honestly, this one when we took it right out of the fermenter was unbelievably good. Yeah. Um, 
the sample that I've had of it recently, I'm hoping that it, it's better than it was when it was still not quite there yet. Because okay. it's kind of disappointing based on how good I remember the initial flavor being. Mm -hmm. I hope that that didn't taint your view of this because I promise you it's still very good. But it's, okay. it wasn't quite what I had remembered. But I mean, you also might not have had me there hyping it up this time. True, true. But Spencer was there, and Spencer does like to hype this up, too, because he, he remembers this one being good, too. That's fair, yeah. Well, all right. I, I say crack it open. Yeah, let's I'll, get her. I want to hear this one. Woohoo! That was a solid pop. Two good ones straight in a row. I like it. You got to do a true sibling pour here. <laughs> Thomas has such a nice head on that mine doesn't. That kind of makes me sad. I mean, it just likes me more. I guess so. Cheers. Cheers. I feel like the color's a bit darker than it was. Whoa. Well, this smells like I remember it. Very spicy, very, like, fall. Wow. Tyler's really trying to smell. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember she hates it. Yep. When, when you do, like, that deep, deep sniff, I can't tell. Oh, this is exactly like I remember it. I think that that honey finally faded into the background. Oh my God, this is good. This has that really nice, like, it tastes like fall in a glass, I swear to God. Yeah, it's a mix between, like, fall in a glass. I'm almost getting, like, a little, like, IPA-ish oh, feel. Oh, man. Is That's... it just me? I suppose a little, but... Like, I'm a little worried, because, like, I... I did just get over, like, a sickness, so, like, that could influence my taste a little bit. I would say it's got kind of, like, I don't know about hoppy, which is mostly what IPAs are, but it's kind of got, like, a bitterness to it. Yeah, that's, that, and that's yeah. yeah and, and so that makes sense. I mean, I'll tell you right now, this is exactly, exactly how I remember what it pulled out. So I'm really, really happy about that, because when I tried it, when it wasn't quite there yet, because you got to... That's unfortunately with the natural fermentation, that's all you can really do mm -hmm. to tell when it's done. And it was just, it, it was all gone. I don't know if the honey was hiding it or what was going on. Very possible. But it was really disappointing. Yeah. This, though, is phenomenal. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do really like it. This it is, is probably good. my favorite. I'm thinking that it might be those natural pears that we, we used in this one. Ooh, that that has a very high potential for that as well. I will say, I think out of the two at the moment, I think the peach vanilla is my favorite. I'll tell you right now, I, I did like that one, um, but the complexity on this was so good. Mm -hmm. This one I is very like, complex. Wow. So, like, there's a lot you can Like, when you take a sip, there's a lot of different things you can focus on. That's probably at least in part because of the many different spices that we used in this. So mm -hmm. I would say, considering we've never done a spice cider be before this batch, I am very impressed with how well this came out. I mean, we used a lot of different spices in this, from the vanilla to the cinnamon to the actual mulled cider bags that we used in there, which had some orange peel, cinnamon chips, a couple other different things. Mm -hmm. I'm genuinely impressed with how good this came out. I mean, I, I do enjoy kinda, it. We kind of eyeballed amounts on a lot of those spices and well i mean this was basically our first test batch of it so a lot of it was just being like well we traded it more of like an art form than a science on the very first yeah. batch to I see what we like and then if it's like a little bit off but it's close then we could tweak but this feels like it's pretty spot that's on. my point is i i'm i'm kind of genuinely impressed with how well everything kind of blended together and i mean we just kind of like i said we eyeballed it and said mm -hmm. well this is probably good for all these different things but i wouldn't change this at all i think that this is right where it needs to be i i, I could drink this from like beginning of fall to late probably even late spring to be honest with you this is amazing you know i completely agree with you yeah All right, so uh, we're going to show you guys a little bit of the new equipment that we got to start the new year now, right, if, if you know what I mean. I mean, I helped set it up a little bit and just kind of pull things out of the boxes, but I'm actually excited to hear what Nick has to say about them, because this is the first time I'm really seeing them as well. Yeah, so I mean, we'll dive right into it. So these are our 15-gallon, our brand-new 15-gallon all-rounder uh, fermentation vessels from Kegland. 
Uh, these are really neat because they're going to save us a lot of time and equipment uh, because these basically will take us from start to end of our process from phase one fermentation all the way until actually these act actually work as kegs and that's how we have this one set up as a demonstrator over here. Now this isn't an actual uh, keg setup. It's just meant to more show you what this would look like. We got our gas in and our liquid out and we can actually dispense our delicious cider right from one of these bad boys. Uh, they do have a pressure relief valve on here so we don't have to worry about over pressurizing anything. And more importantly, we can actually add preservatives now and we don't have to worry about um, our active uh, or our natural fermentation not getting us the level of fermentation or level of carbonation that we like because we can actually adjust it right from our CO2 tank there. We got a nice pressure regulator on that so we'll be able to make sure that we're getting exactly the level that we want. So consistency, consistency, consistency. We're looking Very important. Good. Yeah. And between yeah. these two, we can, like I said, garner our entire process. And we're really excited to give these guys a test drive. So how much do these hold again? So 15, 15 gallons a piece. 15 gallons a piece as opposed to our 5-gallon. Yep. So, so that's quite a bit of an increase in product. Yeah, I mean, between these two, if we ran these as two separate units, we would quite literally triple our <laughs> entire production value. Now, I don't think we're going to be doing that. I think we're going to run them as one unit, so 15 gallons total. But that being said, that's still a five-gallon increase from what we've been doing in the past, so we're very excited to see how that's going to affect it. Ten gallons more for just the one flavor. Absolutely. Yeah. Five gallons for the total batch. Yeah. Yeah. So this is probably a good time to talk about our uh, changes that we're going to be having going forward in this new year. New times, new year, all those mm -hmm. fun things. So going forward, we're going to be doing probably one flavor. And uh, we're actually thinking about doing uh, some sort of voting system or something to determine what flavor we're going to do going forward. And I'm kind of a more, not somber, but, you know, kind of a little bit more disappointing note in some ways. We're actually going to be taking the month of January off for making cider. Um, mm. We just have a really big backlog of our previous batches. We get a lot to give away and we have a lot to drink. We also have a lot of bottles to get back. Yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> and even though we aren't going to need the bottles really going forward, it's still we still want to get our stock kind of lowered before we start jumping into something new. And we're actually uh, moving into new uh, facilities, so you're not even going to recognize us when we film the next time. But I promise you. Oh, it's I, mean, I hope you recognize us. Well, you hopefully you recognize you'll recognize us. us. Just maybe not the location. Yeah. <laughs> but so, like I said, uh, don't worry if you don't see from us for a little while. But uh, we're gonna keep doing smaller things. But the cider batch stuff is probably gonna be February, hopefully early to mid February before you guys see that again. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching our tasting of batch number three and unveiling of our new equipment. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and keep coming back for more. Yeah, we'll see you uh, in the month of February for more Tap That News. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, nice sound. <laughs>